All right, so what's going on, everybody? This one is actually a pretty tough one, but it doesn't have to be as long as you know what you're doing, right? But in this one, I'll explain to you exactly what linear momentum is and an easy way to remember it. There's no, you won't need to memorize integrals or any of that kind of stuff. It's just super simple stuff. So the problem reads, a 10 millimeter diameter jet of water is deflected by a homogeneous rectangular block. Uh, that block weighs six newtons, and we got to determine the minimum flow rate needed to tip the block. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so again, right, just knowns. We know we're dealing with water, right? So let's go ahead and write the density just in case we need it. That is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. We know the weight, they told us it's six Newton of this block right here. So weight of block is equal to six Newtons. What else? Uh, the area of this little tube right here. So they're saying find the minimum flow rate needed to tip over this block. So when block tips, pretend this is a water gun if that makes it easier to see. So pretend you're spraying with a water gun the block, right? Um, you're hitting it right here in the center and once this block starts to tip over it's gonna be about this point right let's label that point O so it's saying find the minimum flow rate needed but since we have the area we're pretty much finding the velocity not really the flow rate if that makes sense okay so just keep that in mind um, the area pi r squared with a 0 0.10 value I'm gonna go ahead and write it down that is 0 0.0000 meters squared. I don't like to do the decimals. It just confuses me more. But I guess if you like it, go ahead. But second step, right? So this problem is a linear momentum problem. So what that means is this. Hold on. The sum of the forces is equal to the sum of the linear momentum, right? Uh, the mass flow rate times the velocity of the outlet minus the sum of the mass flow rates times the velocity of the inlets. So it's a pretty complicated formula, right? To just uh, try to memorize, but it's pretty easy. These, for some reason, this chapter um, was super easy when I was taking it. Um, like I said, this hardest chapter I had to take, well, in my opinion, that uh, hardest for me was fluid uh, hydrostatics when you're underwater. But this one's pretty easy. Um, it's just It just looks crazy. So let's go ahead and start with the free body diagram of this system. Okay, so we have a block, right? Let's go ahead and put it right here. Hopefully my drawing's not the worst. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll make it thicker than usual, just to, it's just an exaggerated thicker version. Just so we could write down the thickness of it, 0 0.015. Okay, so we got that. We know there's a weight, right? For a, perfectly re for a perfect rectangle, the weight acts right in the center. I'm not sure if you could hear Rio. Um, for those who don't know, Rio is our African gray parrot, and he just likes to whistle all day. <laughs> so, okay, so we got this, right? Um, pretend there's a water gun, like I said, like I said um, makes it easier to see, but there's a force coming out from the liquid, right? At a certain velocity that we're trying to find. Now it's going to go, it's going to go, it's going to go, and it's going to hit... And that causes two streams, one to go that way, one to go that way. You can imagine, right, if you're shooting at a perfect angle, zero degrees, half of it's going to go up, half of it's going to go down. Now, fortunately, um, since we're looking for V1, uh, we're going to have to obviously right, do some statics around this point to get F1. Um, we're going to do linear momentum along the x direction to get v1, right? 
well, something in terms of v1, the equation. Um, so, oh, that's right. There's a v2 coming out this way. There's a v3 coming out this way. Um, these are in the y direction, so we won't even need them, actually. But you'll see. So we're assuming f1 is going this way to the positive x, right? Um, let me write the coordinate system right here. Positive x, positive y. So it's going in the positive x direction. Um, so is velocity, right? Um, this is going down, obviously. This is point O. And there's a reaction up and down. We won't need them because we're going to take a moment about point O, and these go through the point. So those won't make a difference. But technically, that is the free body diagram. All right, cool. So we could go ahead and start uh, doing the linear momentum in the x direction okay so first we focus on this part of the equation here we only see forces forget uh, mass flow rates and velocity so forces there's f1 going to the left so that's positive in the x direction right so it's f1 and that's it the weight is going down that doesn't matter um uh, yeah, nothing else is going in the X except OX, but that doesn't matter. We're, um, we're taking the moment about this point and we're only focused on our control volume. So there's our control volume. There's where all the liquid is. Just chilling, right? So cool. That's the control volume right there. Um... F1, that's the only force. So we're done with this side of the equation. Now we're focused on all the outlets and all the inlets. So for all of them, it's going to be rho AV, right? That's mass flow rate, M dot, times another V, the velocity here, linear momentum. Okay, so we have an inlet, right? This is considered the inlet goes in, two outlets. So the inlet, so that's how it works. It's a mass flow rate at point one, V1. And that's it. We can include this one because it's going perfectly up. Can include this one because it's going perfectly down. Cosine of 90 is zero. So normally the equation is rho AV uh, cosine of the angle. Now along the X direction, that's a perfect 90 degrees and negative 90. Cosine at 90 and negative 90, that is zero. So in other words, let's say if it was at 45, then we would have the, the x direction, right? It would be rho AV cosine 45. Does that make sense? Maybe not here, but I'll do an example where we see that so you could see it. But in this case, we don't have to worry about it. So it's just M1 times V1 pretty much. Um, that is F1. We don't know the number. Um, it's rho A V, rho 1 A1, V1, and then V1 again. Um, now these two will be the same number, but they both might be positive. One might be negative. One might be positive or they're both negative. We don't know yet. That's kind of the trick to these problems. So that will turn into f1 is equal to a thousand i'll teach you how to determine the signs right here look it's a thousand times area 0 0.0000 four zeros seven eight five four uh let me go ahead and erase this oh why let me put it here just to right that belongs to this right there um multiplied by we don't know velocity that's what we're looking for right um so it's an inlet that is negative inlets are always negative outlets are always positive so it's a negative v1 now the second one you just determine it along the x direction so it's moving along the positive x so that means it's positive v1 so again, that's really important. This one is negative because it's an inlet. 
this one is positive because it's along the x direction. If you had the velocity for some reason going this way towards the, uh, like this, then this one would have been negative. And this is still an inlet, assuming this was an inlet, this will still be negative too. It all depends, right, on your scenario. In this case, we can have, it's an inlet, so it's negative, and then it's along the positive x direction, so that's positive. Um, do the math here, you will get negative 0 0.07854 V1 squared. Now you're probably tripping out because there's a negative. I will explain that soon. Not right now. That's just the equation, okay? Once we find F1, we could find V1. So let's go step five. We could find F1 if we take a moment about this point. There's only two forces, W, the weight of the block itself, and then this force, right? We have this distance, so we could take uh, the moment, and then we have, well, technically this distance right here. That's just 0 0.015 divided by two. So. Let's go ahead, positive orientation, right? Sum of the moments about 0 0.0 is equal to zero. And the reason we do it equal to zero is because at zero, that's when the system is uh, at equilibrium. So technically right now, it's acting, assuming there's no water being hit, this is just gravity, right? Now you have to apply a force enough to barely tip it over. So that's when it's equal to zero. So that's why we do equal zero at this point. Um, let's see. So we have W, that's gonna create a counterclockwise, so that's positive. W of the block times uh, this distance, that's 0 0.015 divided by two. 0 0.015 over two, right? That moment creates a positive moment counterclockwise and then f1 creates a cl uh, clockwise moment so that is negative negative f1 and right here we have that distance it's 0 0.05 right and that's equal to zero there's no other forces um these don't really count as forces um no no i mean they don't count as forces that's momentum you don't get the two mixed up and then these two forces go through 0.0, so they're useless. Do the math here. Again, weight of the block is equal to 6 newtons, right? So do the math. You will get F1 is equal to 0 0.9 newtons. Cool. So we got F1. We could plug it into here. So step 6. Move it up a little bit. We got, uh, what is that, 0 0.9, right, plug in, equals negative 0 0.07854 V1 squared. Okay, so we got a negative, and we can take the square root of a negative. Now, I know what you're thinking, something went wrong. No. So all this means that here, we assume the wrong direction for F1. So we assumed it was going this way, when in reality, it's actually going this way, this negative X direction. If we assume that, this would have been F1 equals positive 0 0.07854. Now, that's something you gotta just keep an eye out for. Um, it doesn't matter how you assume it, the signs at the end will work themselves out. So if you feel more comfortable, once you get here, switching the signs and redoing this part, you're just at a negative F1, right? Because now you're assuming it's going this way. This is gonna be negative. Now negative F1 is equal to negative 0 0.7854. Negatives cancel out. That's pretty much it. So in this case, believe it or not, we could just assume, well not assume, but we'll change the direction. And now all of a sudden, Eight, yeah, five, four, V. Yeah, so that's exactly what happened. I don't just get rid of it because I want to. Now I realize that the force is actually going in the negative x direction. Um, solve for V1. 
I hope that makes sense. Um, like I said, you, unless you could see it logically, yeah, there's a 50-50 chance you're going to assume forces in the wrong direction every single time. And that's not even just in fluids. That's in dynamics. That's in heat transfer, you know, conduction when you get to that piece. Um, finite element analysis, I know you assume some stuff there. That's kind of the whole point of these problems is just assume directions and then the signs will eventually fix themselves. So V1 is equal to 3.39 meters per second and we're pretty much done with the problem it says find the flow rate but flow rates equal to qav right so if they give us area they're pretty much just saying find the velocity it's not really the flow rate but now we just final step right i'm not sure you can see that all right there Final step is ba, 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 QAV. So 0.1. Q is equal to 0 0.0000, right? Remember from here? 7854 meters squared times 3.39 meters per second velocity. Finally, you will get 0 0.000266 meters cubed per second, or that's also equal to 2.66, goes one, two, three, four, times 10 to the negative four meters cubed per second. So that's the answer. Um, this one was a really important problem. Um, you have to realize this. Sometimes you'll get negatives again. It depends how you assume your free body diagram. Um, that's a big one right there. Another thing is, don't memorize this formula because that's a little trickier. Just again, the forces is just positive X, positive um, or negative X. We didn't need Y because, I mean, we really didn't, right? We were looking we there was nothing in the problem that required us to find forces in the y direction for whatever reason but some other problems will require it um another thing inlets the velocity is always negative right remember right here inlet it's negative and then positive x or negative x direction will determine this sign so in this case velocity is moving in the positive x direction so this one's positive and in this case it's an inlet so this is negative. As long as you remember that inlets are negative, outlets are positive. That's for the first V, right? The first velocity. And the second V is just positive or negative X direction. In this case, same thing for Y, right? Positive or negative Y for other problems. But that is, and also I just realized we did not need the 200 millimeters. So it's going 200 millimeters into the paper. Um, I don't know why they added it. Sometimes they just like to add it for no reason, right? But it's just so you know. There we go. It's going 200 into the paper. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope this one was easy to understand. But there it is. And good luck.